Thanks for tuning in. This is Crunchworks. Today I'm going to show you guys how to do high res fix. So on the left hand side we have Forge and I'm going to try to help you guys that are moving from Forge over to Comfy UI feel more comfortable with Comfy and then kind of just compare the different settings so you can see what correlates to what. So on the left hand side what we have here is high res fix and that's what we're going to be working on today. So when you click on high res fix it gives you the option of choosing either the latent options and then you can use like an, an actual model to do the upscale you have the option of a denoise strength you've got your resize your width and height you've got your high res cfg scale then you've got your upscale by which is like the factor two three four five whatever so that's basically what we're going to build in the comfy ui today so i'm going to go ahead and go to workflow and just do a browse template i'm going to start with the basic image generation template now if you notice you can't see anything on the screen so if you look in the lower right hand corner just hit that fit view and that'll fit it on the screen if you ever have that issue okay so i'm going to go ahead and just say change this over to illustrious and we'll make uh this shift i like shift it's one of the newer uh checkpoints whenever you want to introduce the iris fix you want to introduce that after your K sampler. I'm gonna show you two different methods. There's more than two actually that you can do, but I'm gonna show you at least two different methods. First thing you can do is you'll do the high res fix using an upscale model. You choose load upscale model. Then you wanna choose upscale image using model. And then you want to do an upscale image node. You'll need these three. The reason why is because whenever you're gonna use an upscale model, it's going to default to however many times this model typically upscales. In this case, 4x, since I'm going to be using ultra sharp. If you want to have a little bit more control, if you don't want it to upscale actually four times, and rather just maybe two times, and we're going to double this to 2048, for example, then you'll need to have this upscale image node so you can set the actual dimensions. Being that this is going to be an illustrious model, I'm going to set this at 1024 by 1024, and then we'll connect it this way. So the model goes there. Then you'll take the decoded image, you'll bring it into that, You'll take this and then move it into the upscale image. And then you'll take this and move it into another K sampler. So what you do is just all drag the K sampler. This is going to have to be re-encoded into the latent space. You'll need a VAE encode node. And then you'll need the VAE, which will drag from the model itself. And then you just plug that right into the latent you just copy over these uh, conditioning positive and negative super simple and then you just drag the model over and like I told you before in a previous video just match the colors is pretty easy then we'll need to decode this back into uh, pixel space so we'll do a VAE decode we'll drag that uh, VAE over again now as you can see I don't really have that on the same screen so one thing you can do is just drag and do user reroute node keep dragging until you get over to where you want and then do another reroute and then just connect it that way and then we'll just do a save image and that's it so I'm going to show you guys how to compare two images together using another node which is an image comparer node and that's with the RG3 uh, custom node pack that's something I recommended in the previous video I would definitely recommend getting his nodes take the image decode for each of these stages I just put them there and then it'll it'll let you uh, slide between the two and compare but I'm just gonna go ahead and do all three so go ahead and cue this up and we'll take a look at it before I do that let me go ahead and change the denoise I'm gonna change this denoise to 0 0.25 and as always I like to keep my my seeds fixed in case I like them and I want to do some additional tuning and I just set my seed to one all right so let's fire this up while this is generating, basically the purpose of high res fixes so that you can do another iteration of the image at a much higher resolution, which introduces additional detail, makes the image look better. When you're using older models like SD 1.5, it can actually improve things like the hands and sometimes the face. Okay, so there you go. So as you can see here, it's uh, doubled the resolution. And as you can see with the image comparer, you can just go back and forth and see the, the differences between the, the changes. Okay, so that's one method of doing this. And what that's doing, that's doing the upscale in the pixel space. The other option that you have is to upscale in the latent space. If you remember back in Forge, you've got a latent option. Now, I really haven't seen the benefit of doing one over the other. Personally, I don't really see the difference. I mean, there's a difference, but I haven't decided which one's better yet. So it really is up to you. But doing a latent upscale actually does have its downsides. And I'm gonna show you what those downsides are in just a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and just group this really quick. 
So I just highlighted that, control highlighted those, and I just control G for group. And we'll just call this um, high res pixel. And then I'll just move it to the side over here. So all you do is do upscale latent. And you'll set the resolution, in this case 2048 by 2048. And then you'll just connect this latent to that latent. And you don't need this uh, VAE encode. So let me just put that in here, since that's a part of that. Okay. All right, and I'll just queue this up. And you're going to see one of the downsides of using this, because I'm doubling the size. And notice that I have my denoise set at 25, right? Now watch what happens to this once I do the upscale. So what you'll notice is at a low denoise, it introduces pixelization to the image. You see that corruption? Now that does not happen if you denoise at, I believe it's 0.4 or higher. So if I set that to 0.50 and I run it again, you'll see the difference. And there we go. So as you can see, it's much more detailed now. So the latent upscale works and you'll have to you know, make the determination on which version of the upscale you like better. Just know that when you're doing a latent upscale, you'll have to be careful about your denoise values. If you don't want to deal with that, just go with the uh, high res pixel upscale. Otherwise you can do the latent upscale. Now, if you want to do like the way it has here, you can do upscale by two, three, four, five, and so on. Um, you can do an upscale latent by just like that, and then you can set your scale number, you know, two, four, five, whatever. Just know that it goes by the same rules as the other one where the denoise value affects the equality output. Now there's one really cool node that I found, which is with the impact pack. It's the latent scale on pixel space. And so I'm gonna just delete these two here. And the way this one works is it takes the latent output, and then what it does is it upscales it in pixel space and then converts it back to latent space so you can make the connection to your your second case sampler. The benefit of this is because it's being done in the pixel space, you don't have to worry about your denoise values, but just keep in mind, it's not a true latent upscale. All you do is just make sure you connect your VAE there. The cool thing is it also allows you to use an upscale model. I haven't figured out how to do a latent upscale with a model. I don't even know that's possible, but I'm, I'm still new to Comfy. If you want to use this particular node, You'll need the impact pack, which I do recommend getting, it has a lot of really cool nodes. And then you'll just want to make sure that you have a uh, upscale model if you choose to use that. And that's it. Now, one thing before I let you guys go is I want to recommend that you take notes. If you guys are not taking notes, you're, you're really setting yourself up for failure. I just have everything listed in my OneNote, all the different generators, different LoRa's, and I just take notes. Here are some different models I have. I take things from the Civit AI page. That way I can kind of refer back to this whenever I need, just whenever I need some convenient information. Also, I created my own little user guide. So I just take notes and screenshots of different things that I learn. So yeah, everyone learns different. I'm, I'm more of a visual learner. I don't like to try to, to remember everything. So I would definitely recommend you guys take notes, make things easy for yourself in the future. So I hope that helps some people out. Talk to you guys again soon. Later.